The human body as depicted in interwar photography reveals a lot about how people in mainstream culture saw themselves in a contemporary changing world after World War I and subsequent nation building efforts. Among the topics to be discussed are how World War I introduced and fostered new technologies in a changing world, as well as how society had to adapt to changing culture. It will also be examined how the body has been utilised to promote political goals during times of conflict, as well as how World War II contributed to the gays and the promotion of negative messages about women's bodies. This overarching theme of the impact of the world wars on people's perception of the human body and the ever-changing roles in society will be examined by looking at modernism designer Marcel Brewer, photographer Bill Brandt and artist Julie Rapp. The ending of the First World War brought new inventions, technologies and designs. Born in 1902 in Hungary, Marcel Brewer not only attended one of the most influential and significant modernist art schools of the 20th century, Bauhaus, but also was a master carpenter in the early 1920s. His whole body of work, which includes architecture and furniture, reflects the Bauhaus objective of uniting art and business. Brewer frequently collaborated with other designers, building a vibrant international practice that reinforced his status as one of the most influential architects of the modern era. Brewer, ever the pioneer, was ready to put the latest technological breakthroughs to the test as well as to break with traditional forms, often with shocking consequences. The Cheska chair is one of Brewer's most recognised and significant designs from 1928. Michael Thonnet, a German-Austrian cabinet builder, was the first to produce the chair. The steel frame of the renowned designer's Adler bicycle had a considerable effect on the turbulent construction of the chair. Brewer experimented with the strength and lightness of tur- metal with the Wasley chair in 1926. Almost a century later, the chair remains a popular and sought-after design. The Cheska chair is designed to be functional and to meet demands of modern living. The chair's function and design are so popular that they've become a symbol of the 20th century design and among the wi- most widely plagiarised modern designs. Any examination of modernist images of men's and women's bodies would undoubtedly conclude that the body was a source of obsession, modification, transformation and even reinvention throughout this period. The betrayal of the human body in interwar photography reveals a lot about how culture and society at the time saw their position in a changing world following World War I and subsequent nation-building efforts. World War I was a war that had never been seen before. The destruction and death on such a dramatic global scale was a conflict which people of the post-war time believed would never happen again. The ending of the war brought about new technologies, inventions and ultimately how people perceived their place in the changing world and society. Bill Brandt, a photographer famed for his photojournalist work recording elements of British society, was born in 1904. He began his photography career in France in 1929 and returned to London in 1931. During the interwar period, Brandt captured an image of a crowd of people gathered in a park to watch cricket. This silver gelatin photograph, taken 16 years after the end of World War I, depicts a mundane and calming activity. This starkly contrasts the war's brutality. He explores ideas of a shared humanity with the same universal rights. Brandt's approach changed back to the creative, expressionist manner manner he had mastered as a young man after World War II. Landscapes, nudes and portraits were his main subjects. It can be seen that after World War II, the body is no longer viewed as a machine, but rather as frail. Brandt explores how after World War II, the body can be seen as frail and more of a fleeting experience. Brandt's Camden Hill nude, 1949, was taken on a Kodak wide-angled camera. The distorted, low perspectives used here help to create depth, which is further emphasised in Brandt's use of vignette in the edges of the photograph. The nude female model in the photograph is turned away, her back facing the viewer, and the ceiling seemingly to be pressing down on her due to the use of unnatural low perspective. The photograph adopts an eerie mood due to the use of harsh lighting and low angles. A theme of isolation can be taken from this photograph as Brandt depicts the, females, depicts the female figure to be almost slumped and tired, which actively contrasts against the traditional nude female figures as they often are an object of desire and suggested availability. The world wars aided the narrative that men's bodies are stronger slash more powerful 
and deemed as more fit for a battlefield, whereas a woman's is weak. It can be seen that the female gender has been modified into a long and established history of female archetypes and mythologies. Born in 1950, Julie Rapp has been a major figure in Australian contemporary art for over three decades. Rapp's Puberty, 1984, from the series Persona and Shadow, is an appropriation of Edvin Munch's Puberty, 1894, and depicts a woman, a, a woman appearing to be laying down covering her naked body with her hands. This black and white photograph is distorted and fragmented to make the mixed media artwork appear college-like and contrasts against the painted background as it is not distorted. Rappers position the female model to be directly looking into the camera to create a sense of vulnerability and uncomfortableness, drawing on the man manifestation of female experience, in this case, of living in the female body. Rapp uses part of Munch's painting in the background of her artwork, creating an outline around the fragmented body. This outline refers to the original imagery of sexual awakening and the sense of threat in the shadow figure. She explores here a dominant narrative that has emerged that places the burden and blame for puberty's difficulties and the dangers on the body of developing girls. Rappers made the photograph distorted to create the impression that she is being pulled apart and not put back together correctly. This relates to the theme of how the world wars impacted the ever-changing roles in society as a confronting artwork conveys the idea of a girl going through puberty and suddenly being seen as a sexual object and the loss of childhood innocence. Rapp's puberty demonstrates how the foundation of sexual violence is deeply ingrained in the structure of society and sustained by the legitimacy given to, given to patriarchal institutions. This uncomfortableness can especially be seen in the way she appears to be vulnerable and trying to hide herself. Rapp's Boat Tales 2004 from her series Soft Targets depicts a passive reclining body that investigates the fragile dimension of human existence. The female figure's legs are missing from the photograph, yet their outline is seen in the shadow to create a ghost and phantom-like appearance. This supports meaning and messages of a bullet base collapsing in the target, causing the bullet to bend and deviate from coarse phantom limbs. The model's face is positioned away from the camera, hidden, alluding to the underscoring of the significance of the body as a target. Rapp's photograph is a reference to the shared act of viewing through a camera lens and through a rifle sight in military operations. It also explores how photographers and soldiers both shoot the body. The figure in the photograph is distorted and fragmented, commenting on how bodies are used as weapons of war. Ultimately, the body is a complex subject that has been used to push political agendas over wartime and is a prevalent part of patriarchal society. The depiction of human body in interwar photography shows a great deal about how popular culture at the time perceived their role in contemporary changing world following World War I, 1914 to 1918, and their subsequent nation-building efforts. Thank you for listening.